All right guys, so today we are having a issue with one of our salters. We are getting the HP code on the controller, which stands for hopper power. So I'm gonna take you guys through the steps to diagnose this issue and hopefully we can get this fixed. So hopper power here um, usually has something to do with your motor is drawing too much current. So it um, the module will cut the power so that you don't do any damage to anything. So what I'll do is um, I got my coworker here and he's gonna help push uh, the buttons on the side of the salter to start the belt and we'll see what happens. So he's over here pushing the buttons on the side of the salter and um, hopefully you guys can hear that, but the controller started beeping. Um, and as you guys can see here, we are getting the HP code. So we'll just push the on off button to reset it. And let's see if we can get this thing going. Um, I've had this problem before and it's been the motor. So um, what we'll do is over here on the motor, um, we can just wiggle, oh, look at that. This terminal looks like it's loose. Hopefully you guys can see it. Um, this terminal here is loose. So maybe what we'll do is just try and readjust it to a certain position and see. Um, okay, so now, um, I don't know if you guys could see it there, but the motor did start spinning for a second. I'm just gonna go reset the code here one more time. Pushing the on button and uh, we'll see what happens here. I'll hold this wire in a different position again and hopefully we can see the motor. There you go. So you saw the motor start to turn there. So we do have an issue somewhere here with our motor. So I think first thing I'm gonna try and do here is tighten up, see if we can get this positive terminal on our battery to tighten up because it is a little bit loose. It doesn't look like it's the actual connection itself. It looks like the whole stud going into the motor is uh, is loose. So maybe we'll try and tighten this bottom nut. I don't really know what we can do about it, but let's uh, let's try that out first before we go and uh, go any further. All right, guys. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to unplug the main connection of the salt coming from the truck coming in. So we got that unplugged on the side over there and I got two uh, 10 millimeter wrenches here. And we're going to start by taking this one terminal off that uh, is, is loose and giving us problems. So we'll just start to unscrew this top nut here. And what we can do is take the connection piece off of it, put that off to the side. Uh, you got a couple washers here that we can take off. And then now we can see uh, if it is possible to tighten this up. It's getting nice and snug there. So now that we got the stud tightened up, let's put our connection back on and let's uh, try and see what happens here uh, when we plug the salter back in and try to turn it on. All right, so we got that tight. Uh, I'm gonna plug the salter back in and I will try to uh, operate the conveyor mower there and see what happens. All right, so we got the key on now. Um, I'm gonna push the buttons to turn on the conveyor. Uh, you guys are a little bit close here, but hopefully you guys can see if it does start to work. So it does not look like it is working. Um, hopefully the salter will start beeping at us. Let me go double check. All right guys, so we just tightened up that stud and we are still getting that same code inside the truck. So obviously that is not the problem. So let's go to the next step and see if we can figure out what's going on here. All right guys, so the next step to trying to figure out this issue here is we are gonna test for voltage across the battery to see if the module is supplying voltage to the motor. So I'm just gonna put my two leads on our motor and then my coworker is going to press the buttons there and hopefully you guys can see the multimeter there and we can see 
if we get some voltage. So there you go. So we got 12.3 volts. So that means that the module is trying to send power to the motor. So there's nothing wrong with the electrical system. Um, I'm starting to think that our motor is just no good. You can see here, there's a whole bunch of corrosion on it and, and stuff like that. So I'm thinking something internally failed on the motor. All right, so to take this motor off, um, we're just gonna make sure that the salter, the main plug for the salter is disconnected over here. Uh, it's coming from the truck and this is our connector. So we wanna make sure this is disconnected. And then what we'll do here is take the lugs, both of our terminals off. Um, so those will come off. And then underneath the motor here, uh, I don't know how you guys can see it, but these bolts here, you got one, two, and then you got the same two on the other side we'll get those taken off. Um, I did go ahead and spray some WD-40 right in on here, um, hopefully to help uh, get this thing off because last time I did one of these, it was quite a pain to get the motor off. So hopefully that helps us out a little bit, but yeah, I'm gonna set you guys up on a time-lapse and we'll get this motor out of here. All right guys, so um, I was struggling really, really hard to get this bolt out from here. Um, as you can see underneath there, you got like a little axle shaft, I guess, underneath there connecting the two gearboxes. And it makes it so that you can't get anything on that bolt. And plus it doesn't help that it was kind of seized inside this, whatever this cast material is. So what I ended up doing is underneath here, um, you have the bolts that mount the little axle shaft that's in the way to your gearbox. Um, it's just some little uh, 10 mil bolts. So now with that disconnected, we should be able to pull the motor, the motor and the gearbox out as one piece and then we'll be able to split it on the bench. So let's try and do that now. So. We got that out. Let's get it on the bench and try and take this motor out from the gear case assembly. All right, so we got the motor on the bench here. Uh, one more thing that I wanna do is just test to see if we give voltage to the motor, if it starts to spin. So just got a booster pack on the side over here. Connect one of our terminals there. And then uh, we'll turn the booster pack on and we'll try and touch the other terminal. As you can see, nobody's home. So let's work on getting the motor separated from the uh, gearbox housing. And this is the bolt down here um, that was pretty much impossible to get on the thing. So that's why we had to take the uh, gearbox out with it. All right guys, so just a quick update to where we're at. This motor is giving me a lot of problems trying to get it off. Um, as you can see inside of here, you got your shaft coming out of the motor that goes into the collar on your gearbox. And it seems like it's just seized solid inside of there. So what I started out with, um, first off, I started with a little punch to get in between the gearbox case and the motor that helped us get a little bit of movement out of it. And then we went to our pry bars to help give us a little bit more leverage when we got a gap to get in there. And now what I'm using is these ladies feet. I think that's what they're called to get in here and just work it out. So I'm gonna keep uh, working on trying to get this motor separated. And then once you do, we'll get the new one installed. All right guys, so we were here um, trying to get this motor apart and this happened. So the housing for the gearbox broke um, it's very frustrating. Um, such a simple uh, fix just needs to put on a new motor is such a big task, right? Like they should have something to seal this surface to this one so that a bunch of stuff can't get inside here and corrode this. But I guess uh, 
it is what it is it's the name of the game when you're doing salt and stuff like that so i'm gonna call my supplier see if he has a gearbox like that in stock we'll get a new motor as well and hopefully get this thing put back together today all right guys so we are back from the supplier um unfortunately we cannot just buy this piece we had to buy the whole gearbox assembly so that is the piece that we broke over here and the end of the gearbox here that is still on our salter here so i did try to unbolt it here like we did when we were removing it and see if just this piece would fit onto this shaft but um looks like at some point they ended up changing the the size of the shafts so we cannot do that we got to keep taking stuff apart and uh get this to get this thing fixed so now what we got to do is we got to find our master link um, which i already found here um, as you guys can see there's a cotter pin here um, one on both sides and then that will get the chain apart and then it's four bolts on this side two here and two in the bottom and then we just gotta take the bolts out of our bearing on this side and this whole axle shaft assembly with the gearbox should come out and hopefully we have a little bit of a better time getting this gearbox off of the shaft than we did with the other gearbox and the motor so i'm gonna get this apart and then i will get back to you guys all right guys so we got our axle shaft i guess assembly and the other part of our gearbox here on the bench um, next thing we got to do is take this bracket off so there's four bolts here and there's two in the bottom you can't really see because it's kind of in the shadows and then behind this plastic plate here once we take these four bolts out should be the end of the shaft and hopefully we're able to hammer the shaft out of the gearbox and then we can get our new one installed on here all right guys so we got the um four bolts out of the bracket you can see it's hanging down here as well as we got the plastic cover off the top uh, you got a c-clip in here that's going to hold the shaft in so we're going to remove the c-clip and i'm really hoping that this shaft just slides out of here but if not we might have to do some hammering and try to get this thing out all right guys so we got the gearbox off of the end of the shaft but um definitely wasn't coming out just trying to hammer the shaft out of there so i had to go all redneck on this thing and uh what i ended up doing is i took my favorite tool here the milwaukee grinder i cut the case in half and broke that off and then what we were left with inside was our main uh, i guess you call this a spindle and you had your gear here on it in the middle trying to get my shadow out of the way you had your gear sitting here in the middle and then you had a bearing on each end of it so i just pulled the two bearings and i cut this ring in half and pulled that off and then with a um, bearing puller tool here i was able to go on the end of the shaft and then use these hooks to clamp around our um, sleeve here i don't know what the hell it's called but we were able to pull it off so now um we can finally reinstall this shaft into our new gearbox put the motor on and get it back on the machine so first thing i'm going to do here is clean up all this um old corrosion and rust that's on the end of the shaft here so that when we slide our new gearbox on that's over here uh hopefully it just slides on nice and we can get that c-clip back in here and uh yeah i'll update you guys once all that's done all right so we got our motor installed on our gearbox the shaft inside the gearbox all bolted up so next thing we gotta do and hopefully the last thing is we gotta get it installed back on the salter um, like i said before you got two bolts here holding on your bearing and you got four bolts on this side that holds the gearbox to your um salter frame and hook up the lines and uh get tested out and hopefully she's good to go all right so we got everything installed back on the machines wired connected to the motor so now we'll push those same two buttons we were pushing earlier to try and test it out and there you go now you can see the motor spinning so we know everything's good to go 
And now last thing we gotta do is just put our master links back into the chain and retension the chain and then this thing is good to go. All right guys, so we got our chain back installed as well as we have it tensioned up. Uh, if you don't know, on these salters here, you use that little bolt there. Um, you gotta loosen off those two bolts on the bearing and then you can screw that screw in to adjust the tension on your chain. But uh, show you guys quickly it moving with the chain on. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So we are good to go. Um, this tool bench here is the aftermath of today's adventure. Um, definitely didn't go as planned, but uh, it is the way, it, that is what it is sometimes when you're dealing with this stuff that lives in the salt. Uh, you can't expect everything to come out nice. So um, yeah, it took us about, with all the extra stuff that we had to do, um, it took us about, I'd say, five hours to get everything done. Um, but yeah, hopefully if you guys are having this HP code problem, um, you are able to just separate your motor from the gearbox. You don't have to go through that whole second half that I had to do there. But yeah, hopefully this, guy, this uh, helps someone out. And uh, if you guys... If it does help you out, make sure you let me know down in the comments. But yeah, I'll uh, see you guys on the next one.